Hello and welcome to the 13th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games. I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offensive to complete this tutorial. Today we will be doing a brief introduction to custom materials in your level as well as normal mapping. A couple things that you will need are VTF Edit, which you can find on my site for a free download as well as if you Google it you will find it as well. The version that we will be using is version 1.3.2 as 1.3.3 does have some issues, you can verify the version by opening VTF Edit, going to Help and About, and verifying VTF Edit version 1.3.2. So at some point we've all wanted to create a custom texture for our level, be it a sign or something from our house that we want to put in our level. So this is a fairly easy process. The first thing you will need is the image that you want to import. I have two that I'm going to use today. One is a glass texture that looks kind of funky, and the other one is a floor texture that's just basic tile. These textures have been created using software called Filter Forge, and they are 1024 by 1024. Source Engine can only use a texture that is a power of 2. A power of 2 is the number 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, and 4096. Those are the only values that Source Engine will accept. Most textures and games are either 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024. Once VTF Edit is installed, to begin the texture conversion process, you simply just drag the image onto the VTF Edit icon. Once you do that, you will be presented with the VTF Options window. You have three tabs, General, Advanced, and Resources. You'll stick in General for the most part. When you pop up, you should have DXT1 as your normal format, DXT5 as the alpha format, and texture type animated texture. You may need to change the normal type from DXT1 to RGB888. The difference here is RGB888 is the true image colors of that image, but it results in a much larger file size for the game, where DXT1 will result in the same file size for every image at a much lower rate. This image in DXT1 is only 800 kilobytes, where in RGB888 it is 4 megabytes. We need to be conscious when we create textures because that image needs to be loaded into memory and it is stored there for the duration of that level. So selecting DXT1 we will be okay. We have the resize option. If your image is not already a power of 2, VTF Edit will do its best to resize it for you and then convert it on the fly. I prefer to have more control over it, so I will use Photoshop or GIMP, depending on what I have available, to convert my images to a power of 2 before I use VTF Edit to convert it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK now, and VTF Edit will chomp away at the image and convert it. Now the image is all ready. We can verify what the image is going to look like in-game in the preview window here. If we press Control T or go to View Tile, we can see what the image will look like when tiled. This is a seamless tile image. So it should tile in up and down, left and right, without an issue. I'm just going to click Save and choose floor underscore one for its file name. Now that its file is created, stored on my desktop, we create a folder in our game. So browsing to the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Materials folder, we're going to create a new folder called Tutorial 13. In this folder, we're going to drag our VTF over, and we're going to create a new text document. This text document is going to be called a floor underscore one dot vmt. The extension needs to be dot vmt, and if extensions are not shown on your computer, you can enable it by going to Control Panel, Folder Options, View, and unchecking Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Once that's unchecked, you will be able to see the extension of these files. Double click on floor one dot vmt, and we need to write the information in here for how the game will perceive the VTF image. It's telling it if it's snow or how to handle how it's rendered. So to start we need to define the shader. Provide two quotes and inside these quotes type light map generic. This tells the texture to use the light map for lighting in the game. We discussed light maps in the lighting tutorial. Create an open and a close curly brackets on separate lines and then add a new line in between them. Press the tab key once, provide two quotes, and inside of these quotes type dollar sign base texture. Tab over, 
two more quotes, and now type the file path starting from root of materials to your texture. Tutorial 13 slash floor underscore one. So base texture is just referencing this path starting from materials. So the folder that the image is in is called tutorial 13, and the VTF file is called floor one. So that's how we get this file path here. We now need to tell it what kind of a surface it is. So again, two quotes, dollar sign, surface prop, tab over, two more quotes, brick. There's a predefined list of what you can have the surface prop be, and I'll provide a link to that in the description below. This texture is now ready to be used in game. I'm going to open hammer with the map load, and I'm just going to browse for tutorial 13. And our texture shows up. I'm going to apply it to this face here and just click fit. And we see we have our texture in game. So every time you create a new texture file, hammer needs to be reloaded so it can pull in the new information. So I'm going to close hammer and we're going to create a few more textures. The next texture is going to be our glass texture. So I'm going to grab my glass PNG and drag it onto BTF Edit. Alpha format needs to be DXT5 for this. If the alpha format is not DXT5, if it's set to DXT1 with 1-bit alpha, that means the alpha is either on or off, meaning it will look very bad. You want to use DXT5 when you're creating images with alpha. Click OK, and it'll chug along for a second and create our image. We can verify that it's transparent by hitting Ctrl-M a couple times. That will turn the mask on and off. We can also view the alpha channel here. And this is what the texture looks like here on the alpha channel. And this is what defines how transparent what parts of the image are. I'm just going to change the channel back to RGB and click Save. I'm going to call this glass underscore one. And then close VTF edit out. And drag glass one in here. If you need to convert multiple images at a time to VTFs, you can use Tools and Convert Folder, and you can specify the input folder and output folder along with the source file type and the export file type. If you'd like it to automatically create basic VMT files, you can do so here as well. I'm going to copy this VMT file over and rename it to glass underscore one. We're going to edit this, change floor one to glass, and change brick to glass. We also need to add a, another controller here to tell the game to look at this textures alpha channel and apply it in game. So two quotes, dollar sign, translucent, tab over, two quotes, put one in between them. Now with that, our texture will be transparent. Now we will want to generate normal maps for certain materials. Normal maps are what make a texture pop and look a little bit more 3D and receive some better lighting information. So we're going to go back to our textures folder and drag floor one onto VTF edit. VTF edit can create basic normal maps on the fly with very little control to you, the user. If you'd like to create normal maps with more control, you can use Crazy Bump, which has a free 30 day trial or NVIDIA normal map tools for Photoshop and or GIMP. These are all free and you can find them using Google and the normal map tools are on my website for Photoshop and GIMP. To use VTF at its creation though, we're just going to tick generate normal map here. And we're going to leave all of these default. So 3x3 three three color space set to white. Click OK. And the texture will now be generated as a normal map. If you'd like to get more detail out of your texture, change color space to average RGB. And that will give you a much better looking normal map. It'll be more detailed. I'm going to bump the scale up to 3.5 and click OK. And now we have our normal map with a bit more specks of, of dirt and grime in there. I'm going to click Save after making sure normal map is ticked as a flag. If you pre-generate your normal map, you're going to want to tick this normal map flag before you save the file. Click Save, and I'm going to do Floor1NRM. NRM is a postfix for normal map. I'm going to drag this texture in here and copy and paste my Floor1 VMT. And we're going to rename this to floor one bump. And we're going to add a new line to tell the game to load the normal map onto the texture. So two quotes, 
dollar sign, bump map, tab over, two quotes, path to the normal map. Save the file and reload hammer. Once hammer has been reloaded, we can see that we have our glass texture here. And we're going to copy this and apply our normal mapped version to it. So floor one pump. You'll see they do look identical in game. That is just how a normal mapped texture looks in Hammer because there's no lighting information here. Press F9 and compile the level now. Here we are in game. We have our transparent texture when we shoot it, it shatters glass. And over here we have our two textures, the left one being normal mapped and the right one not being normal mapped. Normal mapping will be much more prominently viewed in areas with drastic lighting. It's not viewable very well here, but we can use a console command to help us verify that it's actually working. If we open up our console and type mat Fulbright2, this will show us just lighting information. This normal map is very weak on this texture and could probably use a higher scale when we generated it. But that is the lighting information that this material is receiving. The last thing that we will need to do is pack our custom content into the BSP file so when other people load up the level they will have the custom content as well instead of pink and black checkered. So the tool we're going to use for this is called VIDE, the Valve Integrated Development Environment. It was made by a community member and is a fantastic, very useful multi-tool for source engine development. We're going to start by browsing to our maps folder and just looking for our BSP here. See, so we have Sky Castle and it's 5.820 kilobytes. Um, we're going to download VIDE either from my website or you can Google it and download it. The version that is currently out is 0.45b. We're going to extract the content and then load VIDE.exe. Once we load VIDE.exe, we're going to click Tools and select the Pack File Lump Editor. With the Pack File Lump Editor open, we're going to start by opening our BSP file. Click open and then browse to your game directory and choose the BSP that you would like to use. Once the BSP opens, we'll see we have our default cube map files. You may also have some other files if you did compiled with lighting and some other patch files perhaps. The start to this is click scan and we'll get taken to this new screen. We need to specify our game directory, click browse. If you're using Counter-Strike Global Offensive, select Counter-Strike Global Offensive uh, CSGO folder. We basically need to specify the folder that has gameinfo.txt in it. If you can't find gameinfo.txt, you're probably in the wrong folder. Click Select Folder and we'll get that put in up at the top here. We need to define where that is so that way Vide knows where to scan for custom content. Click Scan and Vide will scan for all the custom content. We will see that our custom content is in orange. Here's the textures that we generated for this tutorial. And here are my custom skybox and another texture that I used in the level. We're going to click File Options Auto, and these will turn green, means that they're ready to be saved into the map. Click Apply, and we see yellow. This again is representing that these files are ready to be saved into the level. Go ahead and click Save, and they should turn green. Now back over at our maps folder with Sky Castle. We now see we have .bsp.backup. This is the BSP before it was packed. And we have our new Sky Castle that is 12 megabytes. This is with all the custom content packed inside of the BSP file. And this file is now ready to be distributed to everyone online. If you'd like to test this custom content to make sure that it's still loading in your level, you can go to your CSGO directory and any folders that you may have custom content and just remove that content. I'm going to do this by renaming materials1 to materials.old. So now with this content removed in this .old folder, Counter-Strike Global Offensive can no longer read it and it will in fact make a new materials folder if it needs one. I can just load up the map and verify that all the custom content is still there. And we still have all of our custom content without an issue. I hope this tutorial has helped you. 
get custom textures into your level and packed into your map file. I will be covering more advanced texture creation tutorials, perhaps as text and or videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with version 2 tutorial news. Thanks for watching, and happy mapping.